A big thanks to Nissi for sponsoring this week's video. So I've almost made it to my destination. It wasn't too long of a hike. Pretty wet though. Rained a, a fair amount. I was starting to get a little bit worried that it was gonna get uh, completely washed out. But, oh, uh, well, there it is. I'm headed to a waterfall that's uh, nestled deep in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. I've never been here before. So it's more of a kind of a scouting trip because I definitely want to come back here during the, uh, the fall. So I'm definitely maybe maybe a month too early for fall color here but uh, you can already start to see some of the uh, leaves are starting to change a little bit but uh, this location from what I've seen looks like it'd be an amazing spot for some uh, autumn photography oh and there it is right there it's so cool when you first see something that you've done a lot of research online and you finally see it in uh, in real life pretty cool experience Now, before I get, uh, is it gonna stay there? Okay. So before I get too close to the waterfall and it gets uh, a little bit more difficult to hear me, uh, I just wanna kinda walk through, just kinda talk, talk myself through exactly uh, what I'm gonna try and accomplish here with this waterfall. I always try to use kind of the outflow of the waterfall, so the stream that is the result of the waterfall, use that as a leading line to kind of draw the viewer's eye up into the photograph. And I'm gonna try and get close to some of the rocks because in the, in the foreground area where the uh, outflow of the waterfall is, there's a ton of interesting rocks and you know boulders and just different uh, textures and moss growing on them and different things like that. So I'm gonna try and use those to kind of anchor the photograph to draw the viewer's eye up through the uh, the outflow of the waterfall, up into the waterfall, and use the canopy of the trees to kind of frame up the subject, which is the waterfall. At least that's uh, that's kind of the plan right now. I went down there a minute ago, just to kind of survey the situation. I did a lot of scouting online just to kind of get as familiar with uh, the spot as I possibly could before I actually arrived on location, which I find always to be incredibly beneficial, at least for me personally, the, the way that I operate. So uh, I'm gonna go down there, just kind of scout things out a little bit, try and figure out what the first composition is. And I want to try and create a story of this location. So I'm not really gonna look for just that one kind of hero composition and just sit on that all day and just take image after image. I wanna try and get some kind of close up uh, images of the water actually crashing down on the rocks, some of the entire scene in its totality, maybe some kind of mid range shot. Hopefully to come away with three, maybe four different images that really tells the story of this uh, scene. The, the weather is just about perfect for photographing waterfalls. There's not any direct light, which is usually pretty good for these types of situations. Kind of an overcast day. As long as the rain can hold off, uh, we should be in good shape. So this is one of the compositions I set it on right here. I really like the, the trees right here kind of balancing out the entire image with the waterfall here. And then you got this kind of outflow right here leading your eye up there. I took another composition over it that way a little ways as well, as well that I liked a lot. But if I rotate the, the polarizer, which is real simple to do just by the little knobs, the wheels on the top, 
you can really see the difference. So this is very little polarization applied, and this is quite a bit of polarization applied. And you can really tell if you kind of look right through here and down through here, you can really see the difference as I rotate this around. That's, that looks like little polarization, and that's more polarization right there. And you can really see the greens in the trees really pop. That's one of my favorite things about the circular polarizer is it reduces the glare and kind of the sheen off of wet surfaces. It really makes the greens kind of pop in a composition as well. So I'm gonna take a few more of these images right here. One of the more difficult aspects of using a, a circular polarizer around waterfalls is just the constant spray from the actual waterfall. Because when you have the polarizer on your, your lens, it's in essence making the front of your lens element much larger, the surface, which turns it into kind of like a, a big net almost, or a larger net to catch more of the uh, spray from the waterfall. So if you're near a waterfall like this one, it's got a fair amount of spray coming off of it, although it's not too bad right now. Earlier this morning, it was pretty bad. I always keep tons of these handy, because that way you can constantly wipe off any type of spray that's coming on, because, because nothing will ruin your, your image more than a ton of sea spray sea spray, waterfall spray. Sometimes you can remove it just cloning out, but uh, it really just depends on how much water is actually on the, uh, the lens with the polarizer during a particular image. But most of the time it will ruin your photograph. So I usually get into a good practice of wiping the actual polarizer off between almost every shot, just depending on how much spray is uh, out in, in the air. So the sun is starting to come out a little bit, which isn't the best for shooting waterfalls especially when the sun is right on the actual waterfall itself because you get all those kind of bright spots all over the waterfall from the sun reflecting off the water and it just makes for kind of a distracting looking photograph. So it's gonna take a moment, come up here where it's a little quieter, set my stuff out and I was, had this grand plan. It was a good idea. I was gonna put on my, my long lens, my 55 to 200 and zoom into the base of the waterfalls. I love those types of tight, intimate shots of crashing water put the polarizer on and I realized that I don't have a step up ring for my new lens, the 55 to 200. I think it takes a 62 millimeter thre uh, thread size and I don't have a step up ring for the, uh, the landscape filter from, uh, landscape polarizer filter from Nissi. So that is a little bit unfortunate. I might still do it anyway though. Take those images. Might be a good kind of comparison exercise of images with the landscape circular polarizer and images without it just to really really see the difference i already took some of those with the uh, my wide angle lens but i haven't taken any with uh, a longer lens so it's going to take a few minutes here let the sun kind of dip back behind the clouds and then uh, try and find a couple more compositions I, I think i've come up with maybe two or maybe three that I'm really happy with so far, but I definitely want to try and come up with something with the, uh, the long lens, some kind of a tighter composition, just to kind of create a more, I guess, complete story of this exact location. So while I'm waiting for the sun to dip back behind a few clouds, I did want to mention a couple things to watch out for when using a polarizer. Uh, one of the main things is whenever you're using a, uh, a wide angle lens and you're zoomed all the way to your widest point on your, uh, on your lens, you wanna be careful when you apply a great deal of polarization to those types of situations because you could create this kind of unnatural darkening in either one of the corners or both of the corners. This generally occurs in the upper left-hand corner and the upper right-hand corner and is usually most noticeable when there is uh, the sky involved. So you'll notice that maybe one corner is a more deeper, like a royal blue, and the other side might look more natural. That's usually caused from overpolarization on a wide angle lens. Just something to watch out for. Usually the best way to uh, resolve it if you do encounter that is just to zoom in a little bit or just to rotate your circular polarizer in the opposite direction that you rotated it to apply the polarization just to kind of take a little bit of it off. Either one of those or both of those together will usually resolve that for you. So I have come up here to this bridge for the more obvious composition for one critical reason and it's because it's, it sits up much higher and I'm able to actually see the white water right there, the outflow of the waterfall because when I was down here earlier, right down there, you can't see it, it gets cut off. So was, when I'm up here, I'm actually able to see that a little bit better. And I'm able to capture those two groups of trees and capture this side right here of the waterfall because I like the balance that that provides. 
but I think overall this composition works pretty good. Now as far as my actual settings are concerned, it really depends on what the sun is happened to be doing. It's been in and out all day and since this area is kind of in like in a deep canopy of trees, it can get really dark really quickly and get really bright. So it's kind of been on and off all throughout the day. But generally speaking, I've been somewhere around F6.4, maybe to F8. ISO is usually around 400 or 800. But the most important thing for me has been the, uh, the shutter speed. And I've been pretty much locked in at 1 15th of a second all day long because this flow of this water has been, hasn't changed throughout the day so I'm really happy with the, the texture and the amount of detail I'm able to get coming off of the waterfall with this flow with 1 15th of a second so I pretty much have been basing all of my settings around the shutter speed. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. I've been out here all day long. Absolutely perfect waterfall conditions today. Overcast light for almost the entire day. So I was able to stay out here for, gosh, I don't know, maybe 10 hours photographing, which is a ton of fun. Came away with probably at least two or three keepers that I'm pretty happy with. And based off of what I saw in the back of the camera, the difference between the images that have full polarization applied and the images that have no polarization applied is pretty dramatic. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting those on the big screen and editing those and just uh, really, being, really being able to uh, see the difference and I'll also go over all the uh, the details associated with the uh, the Nissi giveaway for the landscape circular polarizer as well so I will pick this up shortly now before I jump right into the photos from the trip along with the details associated with the giveaway something that I failed to mention earlier that I wanted to bring up briefly has to do with the best lighting conditions to use a circular polarizer in and generally speaking when the Sun is either to the right or to the left of you basically 90 degrees from whichever direction you happen to be pointing your camera in I always try to avoid scenarios when I'm using a polarizer where I happen to be shooting directly into the sun or the sun is directly behind me. Now, the real reason why I think a circular polarizer is the essential filter for outdoor landscape and especially waterfall photography is the fact that its effects cannot be duplicated in post-processing. I know editing software is highly sophisticated nowadays and has made huge advancements in the last five to maybe 10 years but there's still no way to accurately recreate the effects that a polarizer has on a scene. Plus, if you think about it, a circular polarizer is like having two filters built into one because a polarizer, it'll always stop a certain amount of light from entering your lens, depending on how much polarization you're applying. So if you're only applying a little bit of polarization to a scene, you might only be stopping one stop of light. If you're applying maximum polarization to your scene, you could be stopping as much as two stops of light from entering your lens. Of course, it depends on the specific polarizer that you're using, but if you think about it, not only is it a polarizer, but it's also like a one to two stop variable ND filter as well. So two filters built into one, always a good thing. Now, as far as the photos are concerned, I came away with four really good examples that I feel of images that have polarization versus versions that have no polarization applied. This is my favorite uh, composition of the day right here. And this is the version with no polarization applied and this is with full polarization. So before and after, before and after. Here's another very obvious example right here. This is no polarization with polarization. So before and after, before and after. Now in this example right here, something that I struggled with when I first started using a circular polarizer had to do with when, I, didn't, I don't know why this didn't dawn on me, but you don't always have to crank it to full polarization on every single scene. That's what I used to do. I'd get on location. I would just try and figure out where maximum polarization is. And I just felt that that was the right place to, to set the polarizer for that scene was always at, at full max. That's not always the case. It depends on your specific lighting conditions and your composition. And in this example right here, I only used a little bit of polarization. So the effects aren't quite as obvious as the prior two examples, but this is with uh, no polarization. So this is before and after before and after, so not quite as obvious as the other examples. And then here is the final example right here. This is before and after, before. And if you pay attention to this area right through here, you can really see these greens pop after, before and after. So the difference between those before and after images is pretty dramatic and it's the main reason why a circular polarizer is hands down the filter that I use most often for my photography. Now, as far as the giveaway is concerned, Nissi will be sending the winner out their uh, new landscape circular polarizer. I've been using Nissi filters now for over five years, maybe six years now, and I've used a couple different iterations of their circular polarizer, but I like their landscape circular polarizer the best. It adds some additional vibrance to, especially like greens and oranges and yellows. 
more vibrance, I should say, than previous versions of their polarizers. And this one also adds a little bit of additional contrast to uh, a scene as well. So I definitely like this version the best. And what the giveaway will, con will consist of is this uh, V6 filter holder along with the polarizer and the actual um, polarizer adapter. This is what actually connects to your uh, front of your lens element. And if you just want to use the polarizer, you can definitely just use it as that. But if you have additional filters that you want to uh, apply to a specific scene, you could just connect this to the actual filter holder and drop additional filters right in here, whether it's uh, you know, uh, solid ND filters or graduated ND filters, you can add those right here if you so desire. So in order to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is just make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like the video and leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite thing is to photograph in the outdoors, whether it's mountain, woodland, seascape, waterfalls, whatever the case may be. And I'll pick the winner from the comment section and I will announce it in next Wednesday's video. So if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.